Prince Philip had to sacrifice his budding naval career in order to serve his wife the Queen. The spirited Duke struggled to settle into the role of Queen's consort, a royal commentator has claimed. Prince Philip, 98, retired from royal duty in 2017 after serving at his wife's side for more than six decades. When Queen Elizabeth II ascended the throne in 1953 the Duke of Edinburgh had to get used to coming second. While Philip eventually learned to carry out his role with pride, he did not find it easy at first. The Duke of Edinburgh was a talented naval officer and had to wave goodbye to his career when his wife became queen. Prince Philip was a boisterous young man who enjoyed naval hierarchy and is said to have been most at home when at sea. However, the energetic Duke had to assume an inferior role to his wife and serve as the Queen's consort. Philip suffered another huge blow to his pride when the palace decided his children would not take his German surname, Mountbatten. When Charles was born in 1948 the Second World War was still a fresh memory and there were fears Philip's German surname, Mountbatten, would sit uncomfortably with Britons. The Duke was, therefore, stopped from passing on his surname to his progeny, a move that left him emasculated according to royal biographer Ingrid Seward. In Ms. Seward's book My Husband and I, The Inside Story of 70 Years of the Royal Marriage, she chronicles Philip's reaction. The heartbroken Duke was reported to have said, I am the only man in the country not allowed to give his name to his children. I'm nothing but a bloody amoeba. According to royal expert Richard Fitzwilliams, Philip's frustration with his place in the royal hierarchy prompted the Queen to give him full reign over their children's education. Mr. Fitzwilliams told Express.co.uk, the Queen deferred to the Duke in the matter of their children's education as Prince Philip's early years as consort were not easy, especially for someone with his dynamic personality. It had been decided that the Queen and her children would take the family name of Windsor and he was denied access to government papers and felt frustrated. Philip decided his son Charles should follow in his footsteps and attend private boarding schools Cheam and Gordonstown. However, Philip's choices were ill-suited to Charles and proved damaging to their father-son relationship. Mr. Fitzwilliams said, one of the main reasons for the distant relationship between the Duke of Edinburgh and Charles was the decision, made by the Duke, to send him firstly to Cheam and then to Gordonstown. In Jonathan Dimbleby's authorized biography of Charles, the Duke is quoted as writing children may be indulged at home, but school is expected to be a Spartan and disciplined experience in the process of developing into self-controlled, considerate, and independent adults. This was a bad mistake. Queen Elizabeth II has to attend more public events than almost anyone else in the country. The monarch is skilled at social interactions due to years of practice but is said to still hate the inevitable hush she encounters when she first enters a room. This is how her husband Prince Philip helps put her at ease. Prince Philip's dry sense of humor has got him into hot water over the years. The Duke's tendency to say exactly what he's thinking does not always come off as diplomatic and he has a string of awkward gaffes to his name. On a trip to Canada in 1976, the Duke is reported to have said, We don't come here for our health. We can think of other ways of enjoying ourselves. While in 1986, he was slammed for making this racist remark to British student Simon Kirby during a visit to China, if you stay here much longer, you will go home with slitty eyes. Philip retired from royal duty in 2017 putting an end to his sometimes ill-judged comments. Royal experts have suggested the true reason for Philip's slip UPS were his desire to keep the Queen at ease. According to royal author Adam Helliker the Queen can't stand the silence she encounters when entering a busy room. Mr. Helliker told Fabulous Digital, ever wondered what the Queen feels like when she enters a room filled with people, knowing they're all nervous about meeting her? Well, an RAF officer who served as an equerry discloses, one summer day she asked me to join her on a walk at Balmoral. She talked about how irritating it was to go into a party and as she put it, watch people peel away, like the water parting as the bow of a ship plowed through it. She said she always felt it would be lovely to just slip into a party, wandering around incognito, talking to anyone she felt like. 
but the thing that most irritated her was the inevitable hush that always greeted her when they saw her walking in. This is where the Duke of Edinburgh steps in to break the ice, not always getting it right. The Daily Mail's Richard K said of Prince Philip, he is trying to say the right thing, sometimes it doesn't come out quite right. He's always taken the view that his role is an icebreaker. The Queen is actually remarkably shy. So while the Duke of Edinburgh's dated sense of humor has more than once missed the marks it seems his comments were motivated by his wish to put his wife at ease.